please call to order this meeting of the Town of Wendell Board of Commissioners. Welcome. Thank you for being here and this little blizzard that we're having today. Um, I'm going to try to get you out as quick as I can. Um, we're going to be led in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight by Delaney Cronin. Delaney, if you can come to the podium. Delaney is a senior at East Wake High School, and she has had a very busy four years of high school. She, you know, I said she's a senior. She's been a member of the East Wake Warrior Varsity Cheer Squad. She's captain her junior and senior years. She's currently president of the National Technical Honor Society, as well as participating in numerous student government and clubs um, throughout high school, throughout all four years of high school. Delaney has also served as an intern at Carver Elementary School, which is one of our schools here in Wendell, where she has worked with second graders. She's taken honors and AP classes, has a 4.25 GPA, congratulations, that's very good, and plans to pursue a degree in nursing after graduation this spring. Um, I spoke with her before the meeting, and she's got so many places that want her to go to college, she's just undecided where she's going to go yet, so that's good to have a lot of choices. Um, we just wanted to bring you here tonight and congratulate you for your hard work and wish you best wishes in your future and now you can lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We can't wait to hear about all the great things that you do. Uh, tonight, our invocation is Mr. Bob Fleming from Covenant Presbyterian Church. Thank you for being with us tonight, sir. My pastor got snowed in in Raleigh, so I got uh, recruited, but I've come with, I appreciate the invitation. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we, a group of citizens from different walks of life and different responsibilities come to learn, <clears throat> learn to serve you and serve you by serving each other, we pray that as this meeting progresses, the people that have chosen themselves to make themselves available to the town and the citizens who have confidence in them and have asked them to serve, we ask that we be aware of your presence and that we be aware of the responsibilities that go with both being a citizen and a servant of the citizens. May we be aware of your presence. May we also seek guidance and direction from you. And these things we pray in your name. Amen. Thank you so much. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. There's no one signed up for public comment tonight. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item number four is the recognition of East Wake High School teacher Jeremy Hodges. You can come up here, Mr. Hodges. Jeremy Hodges is a second year world history teacher at East Wake High School. He graduated from UNC Chapel Hill in 2014 with his bachelor's degree in political science and graduated from NC State in the spring of 2016 with his master's in teaching. You know, we're a lot of Wolfpack fans here, so I'm glad that you... Came around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I knew he'd say it if I had <laughs> Jeremy is a member of the school improvement team where he offers advice and helps make school-wide decisions. He's also a member of the Wake County Beginning Teacher Leadership Network and won a fellowship to the Czech Republic for teaching uh, this past summer, or this coming summer. Is okay. that correct? Okay. At East Wake High School, Jeremy is a strong advocate of blended learning and even has his own world history YouTube channel, which I took a look at. That was really kind of cool. Jeremy's number one goal in his class is to bring global perspectives, awareness, and 21st century skills to his students. Um, 
your principal selected you to be here tonight just for us to recognize you and thank you for everything that you do for our kids in Wendell. And I just wanted to thank you for that. So thank you very much. And is there anything that you'd like to say? Uh, it's just, it's a real honor to be here tonight. Um, first, the first time I stood in front of a classroom, I knew that teaching was for me. Um, for a lot of people, not just for me, teaching is not just a job or even a career, but it is a calling. And uh, I just, I, I love teaching in this community. I love teaching East Wake High School. Um, if there's anything I could ask for, it would be for you to send your kids to me. Um, if you want to send your child to a rigorous curriculum where they are loved and they feel safe, East Wake High School is the place to be. So once again, thank you so much for honoring, t honoring me tonight. It is a huge honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, item number five is a presentation by uh, our tree board about upcoming Arbor Day activities. Mr. Boyette? Yes. And Philip Smith, I see. Thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor Gray, and to each of you, the Board of Commissioners, for inviting the tree board to give an update on the planned Community Arbor Day event. Just a little background first. For the last decade or so, we, the tree board that is, has focused on Arbor Day events surrounding our fifth graders in our three local elementary schools and eighth graders in our middle school. Uh, we continue to do that this year. We typically reach about three to 400 students every year with our Arbor Day events, so uh, we think it's successful. But to engage a wider segment of our community, we're adding the community event this next weekend. It begins on Friday night. We have a free rock painting party at the women's club from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the Wendell Rocks uh, group is uh, bringing that along with the Art of Giving studio and also with the town tree board. The rocks that are painted will be collected and hidden downtown and, and, and then on early on Saturday morning and then they will be found and uh, people can go to the Facebook page to record that, to share that. Our primary events on Saturday morning from uh, 10 to 12 uh, at the J. Ashley Wall Town Square. Uh, everyone's invited, the public's invited, and uh, we hope that uh, you can make it. This is the agenda for our Arbor Day celebration downtown. We, of course, welcome and introduce elected officials, tree board, and special guests. We'll have a presentation on Tree City USA, the 35th anniversary, and that's uh, kind of special, I think. Uh, and we'll give details on that, what that means, and what's required to achieve that award. We'll do a history of the Arbor Day. Then we'll do a tree planting and have an initial care demonstration, and this will be interactive where we'll invite people in attendance to come up and help plant the tree, and we'll sort of give them the finer points of tree planting. Then we'll have the proclamation read by Mayor Virginia Gray. We have what we're calling the Mother Tree Project. Uh, basically, we're selecting some what I would call specimen trees around town of different species. I think we're going to have 12 trees. They will be uh, identified by uh, roping or uh, cords around the tree. And this is an example. This is a tree in Wendell Park, the swamp chestnut oak, and you, it's got the size, of the height, and the diameter. So that's a very big tree for that species. And uh, we have these mapped, as you can see there. Uh, we can go to, go to the website that's listed up there, the www.plantsmap.com, and the rest of that. To, to get onto the site and to find this map, and then you can click on the, the dots there to find a particular tree. We'll give you the ID, some information about the tree. So hopefully we'll have people checking that out, and then after they you get the information, we'll go check out some of these trees that are identified with the cord around the trunk. We'll also do a, a baby, what we're calling a baby tree adoption, basically giving away seedlings, uh, 
redbud seedlings to 35 uh, families. The first 35 to get there gets the tree. Uh, the idea here is to have, you know, uh, more participation by our community in planting trees. And of course, the redbud tree is a well-known uh, native tree. Flowers, it's really flowering about now, I think. So <coughs> we'll uh, enjoy seeing those later, I hope. After the, or really during the same time frame, I guess, from 11 o'clock to 3, we'll have an Arbor Day tree art painting, primarily for kids. And this will also be at the women's club. Um, they can, the kids can come in and they can, uh, they can do a, a tree art, tree art painting, an 8 by 10 painting, which they can take home with them. They'll get some instructions on that from, uh, Lynette Pair, she'll be uh, be working with them. And she's I haven't given the names. I don't guess yet. Of she's with the uh, Given Art Studio, and she'll be helping and leading this particular event. And the tree board will be assisting as well. Now that we want to give some uh, thanks, shout out, so to speak, to some of our supporters and uh, those that uh, sponsor uh, Taylor's Nursery, Mr. Richard Taylor. As you can see, he's given us five trees. That, uh, he's donating five trees, one for each Arbor Day event, uh, the one on Saturday at the Town Square, and then Wendell Elementary, Carver Elementary, Lake Meyer Elementary, and Wendell Middle School. We'll each get a, a tree at no cost. These are some of the other sponsors, the Art of Giving. Um, Lynette Pair, I want to recognize her. She'll be the one that uh, we'll be uh, working with on that. Wendell Rocks Facebook group, uh, Facebook group, uh, Kelly Hales and Tiffany Graham. And then we're going to have food and refreshments with Tukey's uh, Grill food truck and Kona Ice. I hope the weather's nice enough for our eyes. Uh, lastly, we won't, don't want to forget the other tree board members, uh, Bobby Clint Honeycutt, Ken Keisha Staten, uh, Catherine Edwards, Marriott Sheldon, and Lewis Piner. So, thank you. Thank y'all. All right, item number six is a public hearing for a zoning map amendment request to rezone 10.96 acres of land located behind Knott Square, pin number 1784177071 from manufacturing and industrial to highway commercial. Mr. Bergmark. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the board. Uh, as stated, this is a public hearing for a rezoning request for the aforementioned uh, pin number with a piece of property that's located behind Knott Square. Uh, the applicant is the current owner of Verdar Properties, LLC, and uh, Vernon Heimbach of, of that LLC is here tonight if there's any questions of the applicant. Um, Currently, this property is, is vacant. Uh, if you recall, there was a similar rezoning request that came before this board and was approved in December of last year uh, by the adjacent property owner. At that time, uh, there was some thought of maybe adding this property into that request, but the, the property was undergoing um, negotiations. It was under contract, and they didn't want to complicate that process, so they held back um, and then have now joined it. Uh, that adjacent property is the one that uh, was owned by Goldsboro uh, Builder Supply Company. Uh, and, and the reason for the rezoning request is, is similar to that uh, approved in December. Uh, there's the belief that the more intense uses allowed in that manufacturing industrial district that it's currently in uh, would not be needed for this, for this tract. Uh, the highway commercial district still allows light industrial uses, a number of other um, uses that uh, makes it more marketable, while the more intense uses of the manufacturing industrial district also requires a a building setback requirement, essentially a 100-foot buffer uh, that restricts your usable space on that, on that lot in order to protect adjacent property owners. Uh, so the desire is to rezone it away from that manufacturing industrial district because they don't think they need that extra, those extra uses and that extra protection, and therefore they would have more, uh, more, use, more usable land on this property and make it more marketable. Let's see. Um, and the main difference between light industrial and heavy industrial um, is that your heavy industrial is going to be more of a 24-7 operation 
and more of the impacts of that, whether it's you know, noise or odor or dust, uh, might spill off the property somewhat. While light industrial, the idea is that it's, uh, for the most part, going to be contained on the property itself. You do have, as included as attachments, uh, uses allowed in both the CH and MNI district. Uh, on the screen there, you'll see the uh, property in question uh, highlighted in kind of a blue highlight, uh, approximately 11 acres, and the property just to the southeast of it looks kind of like a seven, was the one that was just rezoned uh, in December of 2017. And you can see the adjacent property owners, uh, properties around it. You have a, a property zoned rural residential uh, to the north, and then you have existing uh, highway commercial property in the, the piece that was just rezoned as well as not square to the south um, as, and somewhat to the east. And you have a manufacturing industrial uh, conditional district to the east on the other side of Chart House Drive. The, the comp plan views this as being located within the S4 controlled growth area. Um, it's also located within a, a planned uh, town center or an activity center uh, within this S4 uh, district. There's a range of uses that are, that are seen as suitable, um, and those do include both uh, commercial and industrial uses. The Planning Board at their uh, February meeting voted 7-0 to zero in favor of the requested zoning map amendment, and uh, staff is also in favor of the request. There is a statement of plan consistency and reasonableness included in your uh, draft ordinance for consideration for adoption. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. And again, we do have the applicant here if you have any questions of him as well. Okay. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Bergmark? All right. No questions. Public hearing now open. If anyone wishes to speak for or against this, in favor or in opposition of this project, step forward. No one? None. Public hearings closed. Gentlemen, what's your pleasure? Uh, <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I, I feel like this is inconsistent with, uh, or this is consistent, excuse me, with uh, other projects around it. Um, and um, I think this fits in nicely. I'll make a motion to approve the request to rezone the 10.96 acres of land um, from manufacturing industrial to uh, commercial highway. So we have a motion to uh, approve the rezoning. Is there any discussion on the motion? Does the language need to say that we're approving the ordinance, Mr. Colley, or does it matter? I motion? think it's understood. Okay. All right. So all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you all. <coughs> Item number seven is our snapshot. Well, any of you see anything on here? Do you have any questions about anything you'd like to add, anything you'd like to remove? Do we have an update about the railroad tracks on Hollybrook Road? I have not heard back from either. I did not know if Commissioner Jordan has heard back from the railroad. I have not. I believe that this reflects. Um, Mr. Dunnigan did reach out to me. I gave him the contact information that I had for Mr. Holloman. I'll follow up with Mr. Dunnigan. Okay. Um, in regards to the stormwater regs and um, how we compare to other counties, I think I have a more simple way to ask the question I asked last time. Um, can we look at how we compare to... Um, other communities around us uh, as it relates to nitrogen, um, how they deal with that, what the policy is, if they have the option to do buy downs, how that works, okay. how it works for us, but just kind of what y'all did, but with nitrogen. Okay, we can do that. We may have that by about the first of the week, is that possible? Yes, yeah. first of next week. Okay, so a week. Do we have a time frame about town square signage? You said you says you've met. Uh, well, since this act, uh, went out, actually we've made a deposit on the signs, mm -hmm. and so and I've emailed with Renee today. Don't have a a schedule okay. yet, but more of that we're on board and we're moving forward. Okay. Okay. 
Thank you. Leaf truck's been delivered? It has been delivered. It's in service? It is in service now. Uh, doing very well. It is, uh, the controls are a little bit different, but, um, but they're finding that that is actually a positive. Now they're getting used to that. So it uh, seems to be going well. Okay. And um, <clears throat> since two of the five were supposed to, of the police cars were supposed to be received the week of March 5th, they're in? They, they are in, but we have not gone to get them yet. Uh, Chief and I touched base on that, trying because we have to go to pick them up. And uh, or and so we're wanting to wait to kind of uh, to get them get more at one time. So uh, work is having to be done on one of the vehicles. So where are they? Uh, what town are they actually in, Chief? Uh, the the vendor is in Dover. So you're waiting till more of the two are available? Well, work was having to be done on one vehicle, and so when we have to relay and we have to take several people down to pick them up, we were waiting to work completed on one of uh, the vehicles that we had so we can go down and pick them up. That's what I was thinking. If you need volunteers to drive police cars back in town, Chief, you just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm free all week. <laughs> Oh, were there any other vehicles we were waiting on <laughs> under that first order? The leaf truck, the police cars? Yeah, it would have been the, the truck and the police cars. We've got the three, so we've got three more police cars. All right, any other questions? All right, item number eight is an update on board committees by town board members. Uh, Fire Advisory Board, Commissioner Joyner. Yes, at the last Fire Advisory Board meeting, uh, we followed through on some changes that have been made at a previous meeting and installed new officers as well as voted on bringing in a new board member uh, from the fire department. Okay. Uh, technical review committee, Commissioner Carroll? It was canceled. Okay. And um, I attended the Triangle J Mayors and County Chairs meeting. We had a presentation about Jordan Lake and uh, an initiative aimed to encourage collaboration between upstream and downstream communities from Jordan Lake. We had another presentation I thought about Mr. Bergmark from Stacy Carless from the North Carolina Counts about the beginning stages of planning the 2020 census. Um, I remember when we had to do that last time. And the importance of local communities being involved to help facilitate the accurate count. The 2020 census is going to be done online, which is going to present a lot of challenges because a lot of people aren't going to maybe know how to participate in that. Uh, and they are relying on local government to assist them with some communication strategies, and you will be contacted about more information about that. Um, we also received presentation updates from Senator Richard Burr's office and Senator Tom Tillis. Both are working currently to ensure funding to North Carolina to combat the ongoing opioid crisis and to see that a bipartisan bill to protect DACA recipients is adopted. So that's the most current information I have from them. Item number nine, commissioner's reports. We'll start with Commissioner Carroll. No comment, Mayor. Commissioner Lutz. Uh, none tonight. Commissioner Myrick. Nothing tonight, Mayor. Commissioner Boyette. How about those Cavaliers? <laughs> uh, Pat gets a second chance. Uh, hopefully we'll see them do well. Um, it is snowing. I don't know how much longer it's going to keep snowing, but if everybody can stay off the road, that'd be great, uh, including us. Um, we've done such a good job this winter with you know, the town has playing on the roads and keeping everybody safe. And I think this one was really unexpected, especially all the slush on the roads. And it's probably going to freeze overnight. So yeah, everybody, please be careful in the morning. I don't have to go anywhere. That's all I had. Commissioner Joyner. Hey, Mayor. Um, couple things. One, uh, out of the gate, Dr. Gray, who's with us tonight, as well as Commissioner Carroll, celebrated birthdays <coughs> last week, so I want to formally wish both of them a happy birthday. Uh, the uh, other thing, uh, so Friday, I got the opportunity to, to ride over to Zebulon, to East Regional Center, and with uh, Daryl Blevins, who's the director there, um, and I can't say enough about him and the positive things he's doing for Eastern Wake County. Um, Wake County's Board of Commissioners has developed a program, uh, Economic Vitality, and I knew as soon as I tried to say that it was not going to work. Economic and Social Vitality. Um, 
the, the gist of it is uh, Eastern White County is getting funds allotted to nonprofits and service organizations that serve solely Eastern White County. Uh, and uh, Mr. Blevins was kind enough to have me in to help um, review the applications for those um, grants. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to report that I know of at least uh, two Wendell nonprofits that will be receiving funding out of that um, pot of money. And it, it's going to really impact people in, in Eastern White County. So I, applaud the county uh, for the program and uh, Mr. Blevins for how he's running it. Um, and with that, Madam Mayor, I believe that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, since we last met, I attended an interactive wax museum at Lake Myra Elementary where the children play different parts of uh, famous African Americans of their choosing throughout history. And they told life stories and th an associated date that were associated with those folks. And um, it was very they were charming. The children were just charming. And they, uh, they were very serious about their job, but they were very anxious to tell me a lot of other things, too. So it was a wonderful morning and afternoon, and I appreciate being invited. And I want to thank them for that, and I look forward to going again. Um, and I've had a lot of these kinds of outings lately in celebration of Read Around the World Week. We Read Around the World Week. I have read to four classes at Carver, the preschoolers at Wendell Baptist Preschool, and the children up to age five at East Wake Education Foundation. Again, I've just learned a whole lot of things about <laughs> everybody. <laughs> and I always enjoy spending time with the little kids, and um, I learn all kinds of funny things from them. So I appreciate you sharing your children with me for that opportunity. Um, I have a, a citizen I want to highlight a moment. I received an email this weekend from Mr. Frank Doherty. He conducts our bird walks uh, for our Wendell Park. This past Saturday, um, I may have said Friday, this past Saturday there were 21 in attendance, including two Audubon staffers. He has added new species to the list that he's keeping a list of species of birds at our park, and now he is up to 96. Mr. Doherty teaches uh, birding workshops at Logan Trading Company in Raleigh. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with that, but it's a nice place to go, and they do a lot of workshops and things. And he teaches there. He's very, um, has a tremendous amount of expertise in this area. And I've seen him there and heard him, and he really praises Wendell, and I appreciate him doing that. And as a result, a lot of folks from there leave there and come here, and that's the whole point of things like that, in addition to serving our citizens. And I just wanted to take a moment to thank him for all he does. It's a very unique program for our citizens, and it costs us nothing. And he expects nothing in return. And I just really appreciate that. Um, it's a unique person that's so willing to give like that, and I, I want to thank him for that. Um, I met him downtown one day a little over a year ago, and he told me he had that idea. And I said, well, you need to talk to our town manager and Jeff Pulaski at the park. And he just took off, and now there's no stopping him. So. We appreciate him being out there. Um, I have some reminders. I want to remind you that we're accepting applications for citizen boards through April 3rd. You can do this online on um, townofwindell.com. Click on Navigate, go to Government, go down to um, Citizen Boards, and you can apply right online. And we appreciate your application. Um, our town clerk has made a brochure that's really nice. And it explains all of the different citizen boards, a little explanation. And there's, there's the same information is available online if you'd like to look at that. Um, also, I was asked to remind you that Stars in the East is this Thursday. I think tickets are still available at East Wake, uh, at East Wake High School. And it's a, uh, not, it's a fundraiser for the East Wake Education Foundation, but an opportunity to showcase your kids. And I'm sure a lot of your children are going to be in it. And also Thursday night, the Window Historical Society at the Covenant Presbyterian Church is um, offering a program that's free called Happy Birthday Window. And then, of course, we also have the Arbor Day things over this weekend and the ProTown BMX show Saturday, March 24th. At two shows at 10 and 2. So there's a lot going on in Window, and I urge you to please participate in those things. So I think we're going to go in closed session. Do we have a motion to go into closed session? Madam Mayor, I make a motion to go to closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11.6. All right, we have a motion to go in closed session. All in favor? Aye. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
I'm going to make I didn't hear a lot of eyes there. Everybody get back in here. We need a motion to come back into open session. Motion to come back in open session. Right, we have a motion to come back in open session. All in favor? Aye. Uh, and do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right. All in favor? Aye.